Good morning, and here I am at the Bethel Heritage Park. Yeah, a little bit early, but not too bad. It's, uh, you know, I looked at the temperature, 9 degrees now, 1 degree, I think, uh, tonight, and who knows what tomorrow morning. So I thought I would just take the walk this morning, since I can't go to the gym today, but at the same time, it's a blessed morning. Uh, we've had a couple of good days. Well, I've been talking to a lot of farmers on Twitter. It's a challenge. It's tough, especially when they're buying propane to dry their crop and they're paying out hundreds of dollars in, uh, in carbon tax. It's unbelievable how this federal government and maybe even our provincial government, who knows, are willing to put people's livelihoods at risk just because they think taking carbon tax out of one pocket, putting it into the next, is going to fix the planet which isn't broke. You figure that one out, you know. I uh, had quadruple bypass back in 2007. They put me on so much medication they changed that medication, never really taking any away. I'm not complaining, but at the same time, I have improved through my diet, through doing what I'm doing right now, walking. And uh, so far, they haven't taken any meds off, and I don't care. Why fix it when it ain't broke? That's the way I feel about that that's the way I feel about the planet but you know something I uh, on a real positive note uh, Louise uh, lives and works uh, north of Carmen has a Twitter account called Farms of Canada and uh, every couple of days or every week she likes to get a different host for that particular Twitter account. On November the 11th, I will start to host that Twitter account for that week. And uh, no, it's not going to be about carbon tax and it won't be about climate. It won't be about politics. It won't be about religion. But it will be what I first and foremost have uh, uh, as my main goal for 49 years. I'm an advocate of the farmer. I'm a journalist first and I'm an advocate of a farmer and that simply means that I like to talk about agriculture and if I can tell the story of a farmer then I also like to do that. So that particular week it's called Farms of Canada on Twitter. I will be hosting and we will be talking about to and with farmers. So I'm hoping this is going to be something that I can do on a fairly regular basis, but uh, only as uh, needed and only as time permits and only as responses come in. So that's uh, a great uh, morning. It's a little breezy, so I'm glad I have a hood because it feels like I've got a little cold coming on. Farmers, if you're watching, you're listening. Take care. You guys know what it means to save the planet. Yes, that's how you farm. First of all, it was the environment, and then it was global warming, and then it was climate change. Well, you've dealt with all of those, my dear friends, the farmers of North America, especially here in Manitoba, Canada, and the United States. You know what it means to save the environment, to make the soil better. And uh, right now, this particular time of year, this particular year, has been a real challenge and a real struggle. I feel with every one of you. No, I can't feel exactly what you feel because I don't farm, but I did. I remember in 1970, one. Uh, you know, I guess it was uh, even later, 1980, 
uh, two. I had some crop out. We were in Europe. I talked to my dad on the phone and it had frost. Well, I didn't think much of it, but I came home and my entire crop was frozen out. So I do have a feel and I've talked to so many of you on Twitter yesterday, all day, talking about drying grain, you know, using aeration. Does it work to use aeration? Does it work to bring down the temperature of the grain? You know, you put it in at 18, 19% wheat, that's pretty wet. You put it on the aeration, but the temperature drops. So what about the, the effects of that particular aeration fan? The biggest thing we could determine was that it probably held the grain at the temperature and at the moisture level, so it didn't get uh, wetter. Secondly, it didn't get hot. But as so many people said, it's such a pain to mess around with all kinds of aeration. Throw them in the grain dryer and then you're going to have it done the way you want it to do. But that's when the discussions came on. Uh, you know, uh, on one particular uh, uh, fill-up of propane, uh, Jerry Damari of Somerset showed me a bill, $120 of carbon tax. For what? Well, as I said, you know, uh, the whole aspect of carbon tax is there to discourage uh, the use of propane. Right, exactly. That's what they claim. That's why the carbon tax discourages the use of fossil fuels. Over 6,000 products that uh, are made from fossil fuels, and you start, start taking every one of those out of your household, your car, and so forth, you would have a skeleton. But maybe that's what you want. So here's my scenario. You have the uh, uh, carbon tax. It's supposed to discourage uh, farmers from... Uh, using more propane, use less. So if we use less, we have more spoilage of grain. And the more spoilage of grain, the less food there is for the people of this world. And I guess if you have less, less food to feed, you'll have less people. I think that's really what is behind this whole scenario. Yep, and if we have less people, then uh, we can save this God created planet. Well, so much for for this for this time around. I know I'm I'm dressed in a hoodie. <laughs> it's cold out here, and so I don't mind. So anyway, uh, good to uh, see so many people watching this morning at this time of the day. Uh, have yourself a great Saturday, great Sunday, great weekend. We'll be back whenever the spirit leads. That seaman says somewhere, sometime, somehow, I will see you again.